I had uploaded the first motorcycle review to my channel on October 2014. It really overwhelms me when just over a year later people send me comments like this. I know so many of you have been waiting for this video for so long. I'm truly sorry for the long delay. But finally, it's time for the full video of the Avenger 220 Street Review and comparison with Royal and Blue Thunder 350. For the fairness in this comparison, we will not be invoking upon the historic value of the Royal Enfield brand, but only concentrate on the objective aspects of the motorcycle like performance and riding comfort. The first impression of any motorcycle, however, is its looks. The Avenger 220 Street has been built from the ground up with all new styling. The one thing that surprised me was the premium finish on this motorcycle. It looks pretty neatly put together, the matte black paint looks great, the alloy wheels are refreshing new design and the classic cruiser's teardrop tank shape is there. The bike has very simple yet pleasing look on the eyes. It's definitely a head turner on the streets. The only downside is that the motorcycle looks a bit smaller. The bullet on the other hand looks a lot bigger in comparison, but the styling is age old. Royal Enfield is reluctant to change the overall shape of the motorcycle trying to play on the heritage angle. They have added modern bits like projector headlamps and digital bits to the console along with the DRL unit, but this is still an age old motorcycle. The shape of this motorcycle is categorized as standard, whereas the Avenger gets the styling of a full-blown urban cruiser. We will let the viewers decide the final verdict on styling. Let me know in the comment section below which bike is better looking according to you. Looks might be subjective, but performance is not. Engines produce similar amounts of power on paper, but that is why we shouldn't rely too much on the spec sheets. The Avenger weighs in at 150 kg, whereas the Thunderbird is heavy at 192 kg. This makes a huge difference between the bikes on actual road conditions. The key here is the power to weight ratio. The Avenger feels a lot faster off the line and in gear acceleration is better as well. The motorcycle also cruises at 120 km per hour speed quite easily and stability is good along with negligible vibrations. Compare that to the bullet and any speed over 80 km per hour becomes a task thanks to the vibrations. You're sitting upright so you can hold the bars lightly to filter out some of the vibrations but it's not anywhere near the smooth running engine of the Avenger. There is more to a cruiser than outright power. As the torque figures come into play, the Thunderbird has the upper hand. Not only is the torque considerably more on paper, you can actually feel the difference while riding the bike. Notice that the peak torque is available at a much lower RPM which gives Thunderbird the character of a true cruiser. In comparison, the Avenger feels like a light and zippy commuter bike. Though on the highway, I enjoyed the high speed cruising capabilities of the Avenger whereas the Thunderbird was sluggish in comparison. Riding posture wise, both the bikes have very upright seating positions. The Avenger takes things further by putting up your legs in a true cruiser-like fashion. The seat on the Avenger is softer and wider. Both have got good pillion seats and a backrest for the pillion as well. The seat height of the Thunderbird is higher. It also gets true cruiser style high handlebars whereas the 220 Street gets lower handlebars which aren't as comfortable as the Thunderbird. Of course with Bajaj you have the option of the 220 Cruise which has the true handlebars of a cruiser. Overall, I like the riding posture of the Thunderbird slightly more, however when things are on the move, the story changes. The Thunderbird vibrates a lot more and in comparison, the 220 feels like a comfortable couch on your living room. Only because of the vibrations, the Thunderbird 350 
loses out on this ground. The suspension on the Avenger is also a bit softer. I was initially apprehensive that it might cause the belly pain to scrape but in my testing it didn't scrape and I was impressed. Another thing is that despite the softer setup on the suspension, the motorcycle is stable at highway speeds and that is a great positive from Bajaj who has really worked very well on the suspension setup. Brakes on both the bikes could have been better. The Avenger gets a big disc up front but being a cruiser, the weight of the bike is more towards the center which means that the front has a tendency to lock up under hard braking. A cruiser should get more brake force on the rear brake but the 130mm drum doesn't do justice there. The brakes on the Thunderbird lack feedback and feel a bit hollow but the dual discs stop the bike effectively. The Thunderbird would ideally not cruise at around 120 so the job is a bit easier for the brakes but overall the brakes on the Thunderbird felt slightly better to me. Handling is one department where the Avenger really excels. The lighter weight makes the bike utterly flickable in traffic and the lower handlebars really improve front end feel. The Thunderbird viewed as a cruiser has decent handling but its heavy weight and high handlebars means that it's not in the same league as the Avenger. Mileage seems to be a matter of concern to many, especially those who are upgrading from a 100 to 125cc motorcycle. According to the owner, he's getting 38 to 40 km per litre in the city and 40 to 42 km per litre in the highways. The Thunderbird returns almost 37 km per litre, which is alright, and it also has a larger fuel tank capacity of 20 litres versus 17 litres on the Avenger. If you ask me to point out the negatives of the Avenger, I would say the lack of tubeless tires is one major demerit. The rear should also get a disc brake. Though the front brake has good stopping power, it requires progressive braking technique which might become a problem in panic braking situations. A single channel optional ABS version like the RS200 could have solved this problem. That way, at least the safety conscious customer would have an option. The headlights are also inadequate for those who really tour at night, but this is nothing that an auxiliary lighting system cannot fix. The Thunderbird suffers from vibrations and the heavier weight which mars the performance of this torquey old world engine. It's sad to see Royal Enfield not taking the design forward despite better sales in recent times. A counterbalancer would easily take out the vibrations and a lighter more stable frame could reduce the weight making it a truly great cruiser within budget. Of course when you talk about budget the Avenger is around 100,000 rupees on road Kolkata whereas the Thunderbird is almost 160,000 rupees which makes it 60% costlier than the Avenger 220. The price makes it even more difficult to justify the Thunderbird in a direct shootout. If you want a motorcycle that will do it all for you, from city to highway and from office to long weekend tours, with ease, the Avenger is the bike for you and it's our choice in this shootout as well. The Thunderbird has its own fan following and a little improvement to the design would get it a lot more sales and a lot of recommendations from customers as well as reviewers. But Royal Enfield has routinely ignored suggestions from customers and reviewers alike and I don't see that changing in near future. So we conclude our two-day test of the Bajaj Avenger Street 220 here. This motorcycle has really impressed me in the budget cruiser category. If you're looking to buy this motorcycle, I seriously ask you to take a test drive and make your decision. If you like this review, share it, like it, and subscribe to Ride with Rahul. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very, very soon. This is Rahul. Goodbye.